Hello and welcome back. OK, I've been asked a couple of times how I go about planning PCB layouts. So when I'm putting stuff together as modules, it all comes together fine. And I've got a kind of a bit of a problem now where I'm halfway through the VJ build, only I need to plan out the way all the modules are going to fit together so I can start assembling PCBs for the various components. So I'm going to take you through the process that I use to try and work out how big each module is going to be, even though I haven't designed it fully yet. So here's my overall build as it currently stands. So in the blue bit PCBs in the middle, this is the core CPU. I've got the UART attached at the moment, so I can have an easy route to put data to and from. And I've got the VGA circuitry over here. Quick reminder of what it does. This is one of my beam racing demos. This is purely being done with the vertical scrolling functionality. I was quite pleased with this one. It's a quite a simple demo, but it uh, it looks quite flash and shows the kind of things we can do with the partially complete circuit here. I'd say we've probably got half the modules we're expecting to have in the breadboards at the moment, and we want to move those to PCB. Now, the crucial thing is we're going to work within some restrictions. Now, I want the VGA to be as tall as the CPU, so it nicely sits beside it all on one larger backplane. I also want the modules to be four layer because it's way easier to route and handle the higher frequencies that we're going to have on there with four layer PCBs. And the issue there is there's a big cost gradient if we go over 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter PCBs. So I kind of want to keep inside that limit as well. As a reminder of what we've got, at the bottom here, we've got some memory decoding and you know, demultiplexing and buffering. Then here we've got the memory for the frame buffer, what's going to become the tile map, and also the counter positions to handle the scrolling with the latches that hold the current scroll register values. Up here we've got the sync generation, and then we've finally got the, the DAC and the outputs that connect over to the VGA. Now we built these in two videos, but um, I think that's going to be one module, because this is very similar circuitry to what we're going to need for sprites. There's a lot of overlap with circuitry we're going to need for the tile data itself. And there's some overlap with what we'll need to handle the palette. The demultiplexing over here particularly will need a bit more, but also we've talked about maybe adding a FIFO to the build later on. So when I put together an address decoding board, I want to make sure I've got all the lines and some space to be able to implement that if I decide to add that on as a extra thing at the end of the build. Okay, just thinking about the modules we're missing, this needs to be a bit more. We need the tile data itself, we need sprite management, we need the palette, the DAC output. We've currently only got 8 bits and we want 24 bits, it's going to be a bit more complex. The demultiplexing for memory decoding, we're going to need more there. So if we just try and put that into a stack of PCBs this height, let's see how that looks. OK, so here's the kind of backplane collection as it stands. We've got the central CPU components, UART's over here, the channels for the synthesizer are there, and we're going to stick VGA here. Now, the seven modules for the VGA... OK, this doesn't look good. So I was initially thinking seven modules as boards stacked up on the side. But that's the same number of boards we've got here. The memory at the bottom is slightly taller, but on average we're just going to have slightly more than that. And that's not going to be enough. Now these counter address boards, they've got eight chips on. Now our breadboards for the frame buffer, they have a memory chip, line driver, and four multiplexers. So that's probably about that space. But then Four boards are going to be very similar to that, but with additional componentry like counters for X, Y and some extra logic. That's not going to be enough. OK, so these squares are 2.54 millimetres. It's a good grid to use because that's you know, the same as a square on a breadboard. So that's 39 by 39 squares. So that's just under the 10 centimetre by 10 centimetre. If we can't do seven vertically, we're going to have to stack them side by side and then have one board that's longer across the bottom, I think would be good. So that's going to be too tall to have six of them on average, plus a board at the bottom. 
I do like square boards though. These buffers are actually quite a nice size. 25 wide, 34 tall. If we can make boards the same width as these, that will be quite aesthetically pleasing. Okay, I know we haven't done a video on this, but the tile map board needs the memory interface, which is like five or six chips, plus the counters. Tile data board needs similar, but no counters. Oh, and we need the scroll registers as well. So some of these need to be notably bigger than others. Now, if this is the interface board and it goes full width, and assuming we can make these boards the same width as the buffers, the big question is how tall does this need to be? Now the decode logic I'm gonna put on here doesn't need that much room, but if I do go on to try and build the FIFO circuit, that's potentially gonna take a bunch more. That's a bit more than I need though. So I've got 16 more squares to distribute vertically. This feels quite haphazard, but if I get roughly right, it will allow me to start building stuff. The width is the most important bit. The average here can be slightly taller. Right, so I've got 10 squares left. Now what I'm thinking is it's going to be interfacing and we're going to have sync. Then this will be the frame buffer with the counters and the registers for horizontal scrolling. And we need more space on that. So we're going to go for a little bit more room vertically. Then we need the sprite data, which is going to be very, very similar to that. We haven't talked about how the sprites will work, but um, fundamentally we need X and Y counters and we need the memory. So there's going to be a lot of circuitry overlap with the frame buffer down here. And I think we need the larger size board for that as well. So what I'm essentially doing here is roughly counting how many chips I need on a board and dividing up the space relative to that. Now I need the palette. Now that's got a similar memory subsystem, but there's going to be free RAM chips on that. That feels workable. Now the actual subdivision up here is kind of irrelevant because we're not going to actually finalize that all now. But we are going to design this PCB next. So if we've got this width wrong, it's going to be a problem. So interface circuit, the tile data and the sync generator. Those are the modules that we have pretty much final on breadboard. So that makes sense to build those first. Let's create another subsheet for this. Right, on the address bus. Grab the memory header. So these are basically all the chunks of lines we bring over from the main CPU with wires at the moment. All right, so dev 10 is the one we take across to VGA. Because this won't make much difference while we make the separate piece of backplane, but once we merge it all together, it's going to be uh, convenient to have the wires line up here correctly. Okay, so the main bus is only used to output some of the synchronization data, so programs can know where we are in the frame. But address and mem data, we want to reproduce those. Okay, so what we're going to do in the interface board, we're going to just copy these lines onto these with line drivers. But if they're in the rest of the circuit, we use these, then if we do a FIFO later on, we don't need any additional circuitry outside of just what we've got on the interface board. So we're going to output memory chunk lines. So we're going to turn the membridge load line into a VJ load line, which is going to be Currently, this load line modified to make it appropriate for a RAM load signal, but we're only going to make it activate when the address is in the right range. Right, so the decoder board is going to output memory region lines for the four chunks of RAM we're going to have. 
it's a tile map, tile data, sprite data, and of course there's a fifth region with our memory mapped IO on it. So how many registers do we need? So we need scroll X and scroll Y, and they're two 8-bit registers each. And then we're going to need the same for the sprite. We need X and Y scroll position, and each of those need a high and a low section because they're 8 bit registers and we need well 10 bits for the data but best way to do that is just two 8 bit registers right so these need to double up because we need to both bring them into the board but also take them into the interface module now we have a good thing about bringing these through the interface board means we can buffer them for now because we're actually starting to hang a lot of extra devices off some of these buses. Okay, that is a lot of connectors on that board. Now it's the sync board. It needs main bus in because it's going to output that. We're going to have a whole bunch of outputs on this board. Now these are going to go to the different boards in groups of four. These will go individually, but with the load line. Now a lot of those memory boards won't need all of these address lines. I think at most they need 13 of them. So that would be the address within the tile data or the tile map. But then the memory re region selection is derived from the upper lines of the address. A lot of connections on this board. I need a quick shout out to VizRealm who told me how to get rid of the permanent notifications I had up here. That was uh, starting to annoy me. Now trying to predict all the connections you're going to need for these boards is getting tricky. I think I'll take these lines directly into the sync generator board. We're definitely going to want a VGA clock line, and that's going to be broadcast into just about every board from the sync board, because that's where the crystal is. That's the 25.175 megahertz clock. We're going to want the horizontal and vertical sync, because these are going to need to make their way to the final output. But I'm actually going to number these for a reason that will become clear later in the build. We need the blanking signal. Now internally we generate horizontal and vertical blanking but then they get merged together into a blanking signal and that's all we're actually going to need. Okay, this line reset is something I'm going to discuss in a couple of videos time so don't worry about it for now. But I do want it coming out of the sync board. What I want is the clock to go to basically every board, but I'm going to surround that with ground lines. This is going to be the highest frequency signal on the board and we want that to be as clean as possible. We want two of those because we're going to take it out of the sync board and into the frame buffer board. Now I've got no need for this initially in the interface board, but that clock could well be very handy once we've got the FIFO. Okay, so what do we need coming in here? We need the scroll register data. We need the memory and the right number of address lines. Now, should I take all the address lines in everywhere? 
we do know we don't need that many. Okay, so that one's actually got 13 lines. And that's the only one that actually looks right. Okay, so we're outputting the 8 bits of tile data, which is currently the pixel color from our frame buffer. But each of those tiles or pixels is 8 by 8 physical pixels. So what I want to do is output the X and Y with in that tile because we're going to want that data for looking up the tile data from the tile map. Now for the time being those are our main circuit outputs. Okay pretty obvious to put the address bus down there. It's an output from this circuit. Makes a lot of sense to put that there. Maybe put that on the side. All right now I've got a high degree of confidence. I've got all the lines down here. So I'm going to make a temporary back plane with these three PCBs on it. Once we've designed these three PCBs, I think we've uh, made a nice big chunk of progress. We have a device is already bringing power in here. I need to fix the names of these. This is a lot of wires to bring across. Okay, I'm going to move on and create that backplane PCB now. This board is going to have a lot of connections. Now I'm going to try and be clever here. These edges where they'll be for the PCB up here so we can maybe use a temporary connection like that. Okay, now I want to just quickly make those connections. Okay, so that's, I suppose, just under half of the VJ circuit. That's all the interconnects we need for it. And that's going to let us make a nice big chunk of progress. Now, what's it going to cost? Right, let's order this. Now, I kind of wish I'd uh, planned enough to make the entire back plane all at once, but I think this is enough for now. OK, I'm pleased I've got this bit of planning done. That's kind of unlocked me to get on and start designing the PCBs for the modules we've already built on breadboard. And those should follow this video quite quickly. I'm not going to jump into unboxing the backplane PCB as you'd kind of expect me to do because I'm obviously just going to merge that up with uh, ordering some of the module PCBs and so you'll see all of that in uh, in the next VGA video. Okay thanks for watching hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.